Okay, let's take a look at this uh, this table. Let's preview this. All right, as you take a look at it, it looks pretty clean, kind of. But as you can see, this is a table, and it only has rows. It doesn't have any columns. And as you can see, it looks like it should be set up to have columns. But what's separating the data that's on the left-hand side from the data that's on the right-hand side are all these spaces right here. Well, is that the best way to solve this problem? At a glance, it looks like everything aligns, but it really doesn't. It's, just, it's slightly off. But watch what happens. Let's say, for example, if I wanted to change what says lot size to lot sizes. So I put in an S. And as you can see, what it did was, as I added the S, it pushed everything over. And now I've got to try to fudge with it and you know, maybe try to get back to a kind of alignment thing. or It really isn't the way to go. So, how is the best way to solve this problem? Well, it should have two columns. I'm only assuming that when the artist did this, the, the feeling was, again, let's preview it again. The feeling was that this, if we added another column, that there may be a line here. And that's not what the artist intended. Well, let's see how we can solve that problem. So I set up a two column setup right here, and I'll preview this so you can see where, yes, there is that line right there. Okay. But let's see how we can take care of that to make this thing work. So I'm going to come back to the work mode. And, and even right now, as you see, I had this, gu this guideline right here, and you see there's a space that's between uh, the, uh, the, the line and the words. And we really want to nudge that over to the left so that it, it aligns with the text above it in the, in the uh, table on top. So let's highlight that. And what we're going to do is by highlighting it, because it's a table, so we'll do the little mouse over in the text tool so you get the arrow down. So I highlight the entire column. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go up to object, drop down to, I'm sorry, you're going to go up to table, drop down to um, where it says, uh, um, let's see, cell options, and we'll go with the text. All right, and once we do that, you're going to notice that where it has cell insets, Okay, let's click off on the, the uh, link um, icon right here, and we're going to use the left side and make that zero. Okay, and we'll say okay. So now, as you can see, all the copy shifted over to where that line is. But still, we have a line, and we don't want a line. So now we're going to highlight the first column. And if we go up here to where it shows you the how you can address the strokes on your grid, <clears throat> on your table grid, what we're going to do is we're going <clears> to <throat> click off on all the different sides except for the one side, because as you notice, we have this column selected right here. So we just want to highlight that that right uh, that right side, that right edge right here. And we're going to make that zero. Okay. Now, once we've made that zero, let's preview this. Oh, now we have something exactly like what is above. But what makes this so much better is, let's say, for example, we wanted to say lot sizes. Guess what? That doesn't change anything here. I could say uh, uh, many sizes. Oops, many sizes. And as you can see, nothing changes here. So this is the best way to handle when even if you have a multi-column setup, you don't have to have rules around every single cell and every single column. You can modify that by just highlighting the column or highlighting the area and making those changes right here. So that's how you can take care of rules, alignments, in tables.